guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I made this video to show you guys how I wired up my fuse box and how I hooked up my harness to the, the rest of the car, how the fans are wired into the fuse box, all that good stuff. I'll try to include an actual wiring diagram that I made in case you guys want to use a similar setup in your car. Um, that's, that's about it that's going to be taking place here and I hope you guys enjoy. Alright guys. I want to show you a little bit how I did my fuse box. I just tried to show you and it took about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna to try to make this a shorter version the way you guys can get on with your day. Uh, basically, I've showed you in a previous video. I got this uh, fuse box on Amazon for $12. It didn't come with any fuses or any uh, relays. It just came with this plastic uh, box with a lid on the bottom and top. And it came with all the clips that you need to make the relays, uh, like to wire them up. So it came with all these little bitty, so actually, doo -doo -doo, all these little bitty metal clips. And the way these things work, they crimp down on the wire. We got a smaller tab that you use for bare wire, and then the the outside diameter of the wire goes into the bigger tabs. And then you got the little tab on the back side. And that's really hard to focus. There, you can see it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Anyways, that'll snap into each slot. And I'm gonna show you how that works real quick. Um, I bought five fuses, uh, or sorry, I bought five fuses. I bought five relays, five pin relays, and I bought five four pin relays. They all came with uh, their ends like this, with pliers in them. Um, I don't need, I didn't need this, but to buy one relay alone, like at AutoZone or O'Reilly's, they're like eight bucks. And I bought the two sets for $10 each. So basically the way they work is, there. And the smaller little slot is where the tab snaps in. So you can see the gold right there and that little tab right below it's where they snap. So you just stick the screwdriver in there, bend in the tab, pull on the wire at the same time, and they pop out. So that's, that's pretty easy. And to insert them back in, you just bend the tab back out. There we go. And you'll hear it click. Bent it too far. There we go, click. All right. So that's how the same way they go into the back of the back of the fuse box. They all just click in. So you run all your wires, put those ends on them and click them in. Um, I recommend running all your power wires first before you start putting your signal wires in there and before you start putting anything from the PCM in there as far as from your fuses. Uh, I ran all my stuff up down my fender and in, in right here. I have plenty of length on it here so uh, so I can bring this, so I have plenty of room to work on it basically uh, and to service it later on. All right, so here's the diagram I made. Uh, this would be the top view of the fuse box with the fuel pump relay, keyed power relay, the empty relay, and then the three fan relays. Um, you don't have to necessarily have three fan relays, but that's the way I wanted to do it since I have uh, high and low speeds. And as you can see here, we got six fuses. Two are battery power, one's to the fans, one's to the PCM and OBD2. And then we have four keyed hot fuses, and that's going to the coils, injectors, O2 sensors, trans, mass airflow sensor, um, and uh, fans. There's also an extra wire for future use on that that I'm probably going to be using if I ever need to add anything that's key. All right, here's the wiring diagram uh, I wanted to make for you guys and for myself uh, for in case I ever need to get back into the fuse box. Um, you guys can use this and edit it your own way also in case you just wanted one fan relay or if you wanted to put your uh, brake switch relay in here. Um, there's all different sorts of ways you can do this. This is just how I decided to do it. Up in the top right hand corner you can see the fans and how they are getting wired into there. And then uh, the battery source at the bottom coming in and supplying those two fuses. Now this looks backwards compared to the uh, original picture but when you actually flip it over this is what you're going to see. When the fuse is on the right side that's what order it will be when it's flipped over. So hopefully uh, that's not confusing. Um, I think that's about it with this picture. I need to show you guys how the actual clips work for the fuse. I did leave that out of the actual video. All right, guys, here is the blades for the fuses, and how I'm going to show you guys how I put those in. So uh, they come in three strips like this, um, 
And basically, uh, for the battery power ones, you just need two, so you're gonna cut it right there. So you got two connected. You're gonna take your battery uh, wire right here, crimp it, solder it, and this is the bottom of the fuse box. And you will have to notch this out so it actually can slide all the way in. Because if you don't, it'll bottom out right there. All right, so you got your battery hot two right there, which is one wire, one wire. Say so this is the actual fuse box supplying it through a fuse and then you take your single legs right here to connect to your wires don't want them connected you want them separated that way that fuse is only powering that wire and not both of them not that one not that one not that one so let's go back here for the keyed hot you're gonna keep it a strip of four and you are gonna put the hot wire on one of these the keyed hot crimp it solder it if you choose and then you'll have to keep this because there's no reason to cut that out because that's going to actually divide the battery from the key but you are going to have to get rid of these this side do not get rid of these there's no reason to because you're going to just have the single ones just like this sliding down in there i think that's about it on that um go back to the fuse box here show you let's see you got one piece then you got a break and then that piece right there connects to all four so I hope that's easy to understand, guys. If you have any questions, uh, I can try to give you some more detail and help you with that. Um, let's see. I, in the previous video that I'm not going to end up using, I tried to show how I do my soldering on this right here, and I actually have another one I can show you on. Uh, basically, I was showing an example on how I solder one wire and make it into two. Because you have to do that a couple times for like fan signals and stuff like that. So basically on this, get that flashlight out of the way, focus, there we go. So I took this long wire right here and I took my strippers and I would crimp, not crimp, but I would act like I was going to strip the wire right here and just pinch it down, pinch it down and then try to slide it to strip it and take a razor blade and cut across, peel it off. Take this wire, strip it with about an inch and a half of wire hanging off of it, twist the wire, wrap it around here several times, and that in itself makes that strong before you even solder it. And then I heat up the bottom of the wire with my soldering iron and then put the solder in there. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that for my OBD port right now. Basically on the wiring diagram for the OBD2, you need to make a jumper. And since I'm doing this on a budget, I'll show you what the port, there we go. Here's the OBG, OBD2 that I got off of the actual Tahoe that I got this from. So it has these blue clips. Man, if I can find the camera there. And they actually slide down in there just like that click in. To get those out, you pry up on the black and pull the blue out. Don't try to smash the little the little pins in because that's just not going to work. Anyway, so once you slide that out, then on the inside there's a little tab you pry towards the center and then you can slide out the connections. Alright. Let's try to show you how to do that. Do, 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 do. All right, so I always heat up the bottom of the wire. Need to clean this. Hang on, soldering. I've got a little bit of buildup on it. Okay. So I always heat it from the bottom side. Oh, by the way, the, this is like called like tiny hands. These two little clips on this little stand. It's at Harbor Freight. They're like. Uh, four dollars or something they even have a bigger one with the led light and a soldering gun holder which i wish i would have known about all right so i'm gonna heat at the bottom just for a couple seconds here then i'm not touching the soldering iron i'm touching the wire so this is melting all the way through the wire And then I usually take it across the top and try to make sure it's nice and smooth. All right. And there we go. That thing is soldered and that thing is not gonna break, especially being behind a port that's inside the car. So 
So I wanted to show you guys how I do the soldering, how I connect two wires into one. Um, when I'm doing just two wires, I will show you that real quick. Uh, I'll go ahead and move the camera here. Wires, and you're gonna X them about in the middle. Sorry, not in the middle. In the middle of one of the wires, you're gonna take the edge of the other wire and touch it to it and then start wrapping it around. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, start wrapping it around when you're done. Yeah, there we go. And that's pretty strong right there. And then you solder it. So having a strong connection before you even solder it ensures that after you solder it, it's gonna be good. Here is my wiring harness coming into the car. Got my computer. There's only two wires you need to hook, well, three wires that you need to make your car run. Uh, if you want to use gauges, that's a whole different story. I have, I traced down my 12 volt positive from my manual uh, to my fuel pump, figured out which wire it was. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Right in here, um, I'll, I'll show you in the back what exactly which wire it is. It's something hard to figure out because uh, they only have three wires. They have a ground, a uh, fuel gauge wire, and a 12 volt positive. Uh, basically, this TAM wire is the fuel pump positive. Um, this is in the wiring harness coming down from uh, right in that little slot going down underneath the car to the fuel pump. There's three wires on that connector down there. Um, one is your fuel gauge, your positive, and then your uh, ground. So it's obviously easy to find the ground because it ties into a right there. And then my wiring diagram said that the tan was the positive. And the tan goes in to this little connector, which is solid wire. Yeah, this thing is solid wire and it's like a silver. The other wire is pink uh, for the fuel gauge and you don't even need to mess with that one. So anyways, I trace this wire up. It, it stays in this black tubing right there all the way up to underneath by the fuse box. And you can uh, just cut a section of the tubing out and get that silver wire out. It sticks out and that's what I sliced into it. So. It's that easy, guys. Uh, if you guys do have any questions on that, you guys can comment and I'll try to help you out. It's going to be different on every vehicle and probably even different years for these third gens. But it does come up through here. It is a solid wire. Um, I spliced into it right here. And this is the wire that's going to give it 12 volt positive to make it actually work, not the sin, not the fuel gauge wire. So got that wire going to the relay. Uh, next, the brake switch. Um, I was hoping I was able just to tap into a wire over here for the brake switch and not have to do a relay. Had to do a relay because there's two wires on that brake switch. One's 12 volt constant and the other one applies 12 volts when the brake is pressed. The computer needs 12 volt constant until the brake is pressed and it needs to drop. So I had to do a relay to make that function happen. Um, so I still tapped into that 12 volt wire that gets positive whenever it uh, uh, it's pressed. So I have that wired up right here. And to do that, I use the LT1 swap uh, wiring guide on that. He has a little diagram. And basically you need to hook up a ground, you need a key power source, and you need the signal from the computer and the signal from that. And then I'll show you how to wire it up. Uh, I got the key power source from this plug right here. Um, I turned on the key and put my meter in there and found out what was keyed power and what didn't change like with the brake press or anything because I'm pretty sure LSX Matt he had that problem he tapped into a wire and he said it was dropping out whenever he pressed his brake so I made sure these didn't ever dropped out uh, and I used two of them one for the fuse box uh, relay to initiate key power to the fuses and uh, one for this relay right here I think that's about it in the interior Got the relay, the brake, the fuel pump. Gauges, I'm not hooking up. Using the tablet with the OBD2 port. Um, blue, 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 uh, Bluetooth uh, connector on that. So I'll have all my gauges on my tablet for now. So, all right, guys, I want to show you the wiring underneath the dash. Uh, I just mentioned how I tapped into the brake pedal and stuff, but I didn't actually show you. So here is the sensor for the brake pedal. You can see the little that plunger coming out right there. And a little black connector. 
So basically I just took a, a voltmeter and figured out which one was getting 12 volts. The white one is getting 12 volts when the brake is pressed. So I just cut that wire, took a, a butt slice connector, wrapped the purple wire around the white wire right here and crimped it down and drug that over to the uh, relay. And then got the splice from the fuel wire. That's the 12 volt positive feed uh, from the, re the, the relay feed is right, you know, in the pink wire going into the silver wire back to the fuel pump. And here's my OBD2 port right here. I uh, just have the, the battery power, the serial data, and two grounds. And I actually didn't cut the original uh, port off. I just put it back in this hole or where that wire is going. Uh, there you go. You can see it. I just put it back in there. I don't want to cut anything. Anyways, uh, so this is where my Bluetooth dongle right there will go. And that is a BAFX product, I think. And I got that from uh, that idea from uh, a gearhead for life is the one that recommended that one. So I actually got it and used it on my other vehicles first, but I'll be using it with that tablet right there. And I'll definitely show you guys when I get all that set up. So, and here is my crappy label that I made. Um, I'm still gonna work on this. It definitely isn't permanent. I like all these right here. These are fine. But this, there we go. That cricket can only cut so small. So, I mean, yeah, you can get the point right here, but I'm definitely not gonna keep it like that. That's way too messed up looking. So, uh, I had to use that cricket air for that. If you guys have any other better ideas on how to make these, I thought this was gonna work pretty good, which it did for the most part. But yeah, let me know if there's a better way to label that that looks uh, really legit, so. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. If you guys made it to the end, go ahead and smash that like button so I know you made it. Um, I actually got all the relays trimmed up to fit in the box with the lid and had to put some spacers to get that thing spaced out a little bit so the lid would fit on. So if you guys have any questions, uh, comment below. Don't forget to take a screenshot of the wiring diagram if you need to use it. And have a good one.